In a previous video, I showed you how to use the microscope and I showed you a, a, a video of an actual microscope. Today, I wanna to show you what it looks like under the microscopic lens to show you what happens when you're using the microscope. So in this very introductory lesson, one of the most common ways that teachers will teach the microscope is by having students view a letter under the microscope, usually a letter from a print. This happens to be a prepared slide of a lowercase letter E from a manufacturer. Uh, I'll put another view of a, a letter E later to show you why teachers usually do that. But this, this is a good slide for this purpose. This is a prepared slide. Uh, in the previous video, I said a, a, a permanently mounted slide. That's not incorrect, but normally it's called a prepared slide. In any case, uh, this is what the letter E looks like under the microscope in scanning power. So if you could draw a letter E, if you were to trace this without actually touching the screen, if you just kind of run your finger along how you would normally draw a lowercase letter E, this is how you draw it. This is exactly how you read it. Um, what I want to point out is that the way the slide is positioned under my microscope is actually in reverse of this image. So I'm going to show you what I mean because I'm going to turn the slide around and hold it up to the light how I would normally read it the way you just saw it. And if I did that, it would actually look like this. Okay, so I'm reading the letter E correctly the way I just showed you under that image in the video. And this is what it looks like under the microscope. Okay, I'm moving the, this is how you use the microscope. You move the slide around so you can find your image. And there it is, right? So you're saying, wait a second, that's not the way you're reading it. No, it is. If I hold the slide up, uh, the last, this is exactly, um, it actually looks like the last image. It looks like a regular letter E, just like you were to trace, just like before when you traced it. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is that images through the microscope are in reverse of what you actually see in real life, right? The lenses do that. They switch the image around. And so that's a really, really important concept to understand when you're viewing the microscope. Um, and it's one of the things you have to get used to. If I move my slide to the left, sorry, that was moving it up and down. If I move my slide, what I think is going to move it up, it moves down. If I move what I think is down, it moves up. If I were to move my slide to the right, it actually moves to the left. If I move to the left, it moves to the right. So my actual movements in real life are a mirror of what's happening under the microscope. And the same thing when you're actually just viewing a specimen that's sitting there, okay? Everything's in reverse. And those are important, important concepts to understand so that when you're using the microscope, it does take some time to kind of switch your brain around because you're not used to moving in the opposite of what's actually happening, okay? So I hope that clarified a few things for you. Uh, that's an important concept. Okay, now moving on. So how did I get the specimen into view? Well, first I took my slide. It was, this one was already mounted, but if I was making my own specimen, I would have, uh, in some cases, what we have students do is to cut out a lowercase letter D from print in a newspaper, put it on the slide, add a drop of water, and then add a cover slip by slowly lowering it to avoid having air bubbles, which look like monsters under the microscope. Uh, in any case, this is a lowercase letter D that has already been mounted. It's a prepared slide from the manufacturer. And once I got it under the on my stage, put it under my stage clip, I the microscope was off. And so when it's off, you're not going to see anything because light must pass through the specimen. And then you turn the microscope on. And as the light lights up and uh, gets warmed up, and whatnot, it, it will produce this nice image. Okay, so as you saw me move the specimen before, it's not always in view right away. You gotta kind of look at the microscope slide under the stage and make sure that the light is as close as you can get it to finding the specimen uh, without looking through the microscope. Once you're pretty sure it's there, uh, usually it's not in focus, so I'm gonna put it out of focus. You start with the stage all the way down and you then use, we're in scanning power. The red lens is a short lens. It's got a four on it. 
I know my ocular lens is 10 times the eyepiece I'm looking through is the ocular lens. And my scanning power is four times, so I'm looking for a 40 times magnification. And as I slowly use the course adjust knob, which is the larger knob used for focusing, I slowly bring the stage up. And as I start to see an image, I slow down till I get the image into view. Great. And I can move back and forth a little bit just to make sure with my knob. And there it is. Normally at this low magnification, you don't need the fine adjustment knob, but if you want to mess around with it a little bit just to see if you're actually getting the most focus you can, good. And what's in focus for me may not actually be in focus for you. That's something to keep in mind. All of our eyes are different. So, um, and sometimes you can't get a perfect focus. To me, this is the best focus I'm going to get for this video. And that's going to have to be good enough, right? Microscopes, uh, you know, they do what they can do. All right. So if I was doing a lab on a specimen or on this letter E, I would draw what I see in scanning power, which is this upside down backwards letter E. I draw that on my paper. I would make sure that I wrote the correct magnification, the total magnification, which in this case is 40 times. Don't write the magnification of just the objective lens or of just the eyepiece, because that would not report the correct magnification to a scientist. Okay. So now I want to view this a little more closely. I want to see a little more detail. I'm ready to go to low power. Now it's focused. There's one more thing you need to do, and that's make sure your spe specimen is centered. In this case, I'm centered very well, but let's say that when you got it into focus at first, the letter E was kind of sitting like this. And I said, yeah, that's good enough. I only wanted to look at part of the E. I'm good. And I now want to switch magnifications. If you do that, you may, what may end up happening is this. Oh my God, the letter E, it disappeared. It's gone. It's not gone. It's out of your field of view. Now, normally when you look through a microscope, the lenses are circular. So you're looking at a circular field of view. You can see a circular uh, field of light and the specimen, when you locate it, will be within that circular field. I'm not able to show you that on a video. So you're looking at a square field of view. But the, the concept's the same. The letter E did not disappear. It's just out of your field of view because you did not focus the specimen. Or in this case, I didn't do it, right? So real, no problem. Whenever you lose a specimen or you just can't find it, you always go back to the lowest power because the lowest power will give me the largest field of view. That means the largest area to see under the microscope, okay? So... Now I'm back. My letter E was right back in the spot where it le I left it. And all I have to do is make sure that I center my specimen. And I have a little tool on my microscope that allows me to finally do that. It is a little tricky, so I don't know if it's necessarily better. Uh, you can achieve the same thing with your fingers. Again, just realize when you're moving your slide slowly and carefully under your stage clips that if you move it to the right, your image is going to move to the left. If you move to the left, your image will move to the right. If you move the slide, what you think is up, the image is going to move down. Okay? You get used to it. It takes a little bit of practice, but you get used to it. Okay, so now I'm perfectly centered. Okay? And I'm ready to move to low power, which is a yellow lens, and it has a 10 on it. Wow, look at that. I've magnified my image. I noticed it was a lot of focus, so I jumped right away to using the knobs. You can still use the course adjustment knob. Just use it very carefully. Um, in this case, you may just want to use the fine knob. That may work too. Okay, just to test it out. And that's about the best focus I'm going to get. But notice I don't see the whole E anymore, which is okay because I wanted to see some more details. And what I'm noticing, and I'm not sure if you can see my arrow. I hope you can. What I'm noticing is these lines are not as distinct as they were when I was looking at the whole E which is a good thing to notice, right? Uh, by the way, these are just like dust specks or ink specks when they were preparing the slide. They're nothing, they're not other creatures or anything like that, okay? So uh, this is pretty good. I like it. I would draw this on my lab. I would, um, if I wanted to move the slide around to see other aspects of the E, I could do that, okay? But when I switch my magnifications, which I've now made my drawing um, on paper, I didn't really, but if I did, uh, you know, uh, that's that's why I would do this. I would need to record my results, right? 
So the other thing is to record the correct total magnification. I purposely didn't tell you that when I first switched because I wanted to see if you could figure it out on your own. But because the yellow lens has a 10 on it, my objective lens has a 10 on it. I know that's 10 times magnification. But don't forget my ocular lens where I'm looking through is also 10 times magnification. So the total magnification I'm going to include is going to be 100 times magnification. Okay. So I want to view this end right here right where the uh, the loop is, right where the, if I was going to draw this letter E, I would go like this. If I'm drawing it upside down and backwards, like my image is showing. Um, so I want to make sure I get this view right, or actually, you know what, let me make sure I get this view, because this is where I'm seeing the most hue, the most part of my line not being um, as solid as it was before, and I want to see if I can get a little better view on that. So I'm going to make sure that this area at least part of it is centered. Okay, and this is the area I'm trying to center right here so I can see that distinct region right here because I know that the, a lot of this is going to disappear when I go to a higher power. And I'm now ready to switch. I'm using my revolving nose piece, trying not to actually pull on the lenses themselves, the objective lenses. Try to use the revolving nose piece. And I slowly go to high power. I've noticed my lens is getting very, very close to the slide as I'm looking at my microscope. That's okay as long as you had it in focus in the previous power. But now that I'm here, I need to make sure that I only use the fine adjustment knob. And it looks awful black. So I'm going to go back to low power. And this is, you know, if you lose your specimen, that's what you do. So I'm going to go back to low power. There it is. And I'm going to see if I can maybe get, move it to the side a little bit. Because I think I was right in the middle of that E. And, uh, you know, I was just seeing black and it was going to be really hard to focus. So I want to get a little bit of white in there. And now that I've got that, I'm going to use my revolving nose piece, go back to high power. And I'm only moving my... Okay, so I'm not really getting any image, so I think I'm going to have to adjust my light. It's a little dark, so we, we didn't talk about that much, but here's my light. My, okay, I have a dimmer switch on here. I'm using that, and before I focus too much, I see a little black in this corner. I'm going to try to move my slide a little bit. Again, you don't want to start turning the knobs crazy because the lens is very, very close to the specimens at this point. Oh, okay. I think that was right there. All right. I can see I just passed some black with some white. So now I'm going to use my fine adjustment knob and turn a quarter turn in either direction. Aha. Uh -huh. And I think I found an end of the E, which I was looking for. And again, I can't really even tell this is knee anymore, right? Because you're really magnifying in just a small section. And this is what I was kind of looking to see, that this, what appeared to be a solid line was actually quite jagged and serrated uh, and not solid at all along the edges. So, and I wanted to view that part of it. And this would make sense because, you know, this letter E was printed somehow, right? Um, you know, this was good for you to see that it's not always perfect. You don't always get things exactly where you want them when you switch lenses. And so you got to be really careful, especially in the higher power, about moving it. And especially don't go crazy with the uh, the adjustment knobs, the focus knobs. And you only use the fine adjustment knob because the lens is so close to the stage. And you'll see that when you use it. If you take your eyes off the ocular lens and look from the side, you'll see how close it is. Okay, And it's really just a slight touch to either direction, which will give you that focus when using the fine adjustment knob. Okay. I'm not going to get into the oil immersion lens because uh, oftentimes students don't use that in middle school or high school classes, but it's really the same procedure. You just need to add a little oil to the lens as you are going to switch uh, and put that lens down on top of your specimen area. Uh, you add about a drop of oil and that'll do the trick. And obviously you make sure you clean that oil up when you're done using lens paper. And if anything is not looking clear, if you're using your knobs correctly and you're doing all these techniques we just talked about and you're still not getting a clear image well then it, the lenses may be a little dirty get some lens paper only do not use tissues or other types of paper towels especially the brown 
scratchy uh, lab towels and make sure you use soft, fine lens paper made for cleaning lenses and just gently wipe across those lenses and that will uh, should do the trick for you. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Have a nice day.